it's very important, as you have heard from so many incredible leaders, for us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present. And that's our vice president speaking. Last year, I put out a video over on Two Way Cops letting you people know that our vice president was routinely intoxicated. And I laid out how that's possible, how I recognize it. Most importantly, why is nobody else talking about it except for me? Now look, I was wondering if I should do this video again to bring more attention to it. And then I realized that on this channel, we talk about church security. We talk about the safety of all Christians and how to stay safe. And I debated diving into politics. I feel I have to. And I feel like I have to because we have seen our churches become more unsafe under this current administration. And if you don't go out and vote and you don't stop this nonsense, our churches will become more unsafe. So in this video, I'm going to break down my experience, what I observed with Vice President Harris and what that means for America and church safety if she were to become president. All right, a little bit about myself because we have a bunch of new followers on the channel. My name is Keith Graves. I am a 30 year retired police officer in retirement. My job is to train law enforcement. Specifically, I train them in counter narcotics. One of the main classes that I teach is how to teach officers how to recognize people that are under the influence of a drug or alcohol. These people in your police department that are trained in this are called drug recognition experts. I am a drug recognition expert instructor. For those of you that feel the need to verify, my DRE number is 3292. Now for the DREs watching, you're gonna realize that's a really low number because I wanna say we're in the 60,000 range right now for numbers. I mean, we've had 60,000 people certified. My number, 3292. You don't see many four digit numbers anymore. It means I'm old and I have experience. I've evaluated thousands of people under the influence of drugs. I was an undercover narcotics officer. And in 2016, I was California's narcotics officer of the year. So I am well versed in everything drugs. I am a court recognized expert in drugs. I am considered an international drug expert. I have been all around the world teaching other people about counter drug strategies. Now let's talk about Ms. Harris. Let's watch the video again real quick. I think it's very important, as you have heard from so many incredible leaders, for us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present, and to be able to contextualize it, to understand where we exist in the history and in the moment as it relates not only to the past, but the future. Okay, when you look at the, when you look at the press and they talk about Ms. Harris, they talk about how she has this word salad. And in fact, I used the term word salad before other people were last year when I did my video and I talked about how she has this word salad. It's where this jumbling of words come together into one. That comes from people, that is often a sign of somebody under the influence of a drug. It's not the only one, okay? But if you go back and listen, her words are slurred. Go back and play it, let's listen to it again. For us at every moment in time, and certainly this one. All right, her words are slurred. Slurred speech, it's slow, it's deliberate because she's trying to sound normal. She's got droopy eyelids. Droopy eyelids is another sign of drug intoxication. What we probably won't see because we won't see her walk too much is you would see an unsteady gait, meaning they walk unsteady. They're unsure of their steps and you would see that impaired coordination. You see drowsiness and lethargy when she speaks. These are all signs of a drug category called central nervous system depressant. What drugs are in the CNS depressant range? Well, alcohol is one, okay? But we can't, this isn't scratch and sniff TV, so we can't smell anything, okay? But also in this area, you have Xanax, Valium, and a plethora of other drugs, including antidepressants and drugs to treat depression, seizure disorders, you name it. So there's a lot of drugs in that area. We teach cops not to pick a specific drug that somebody's under the influence of. We tell them, don't say they're under the influence of Valium or Xanax, they both have the same signs and symptoms. So what they're gonna say is they're under the influence of a CNS depressant, 
and then they make them take a blood or urine test, and then we test that to see what drug is there. More than likely, a CNS depressant is going to come up. With that said, if I stopped Kamala and she was speaking like this, I would ask her to step out of the vehicle, and we're going to do field sobriety tests, and I would have her submit to a drug recognition exam. That is an examination to determine if somebody's under the influence. To be clear, I am a DRE instructor. I teach the people that do these evaluations, I teach them how to do their job. Not only that, I have been hired by multiple states to go to their state to go teach update training for their DREs. So I even update train the DRE instructors. I am so confident that is she that she is using a CNS stimulant, and again, that's alcohol or a whole number of pills, or not even pills, it could be other things, that I take the film that I just showed you, and when after we get done teaching, there's seven drug categories. When I get done teaching each drug category, I show a video of somebody under the influence, usually an arrestee, so officers can see that person under the influence and they know what to look for. I now show this video to my students after we teach CNS depressants. When they're done with the class, they are well-versed and they are considered experts in central nervous system depressants. So when they watch that video, every student's mouth is open going, oh my God, how is that gonna be if that person has to make the decision about deploying nuclear weapons? I want you to read the book by Annie Jacobson called Nuclear War, A Scenario. I want you to go read that and see what decision-making processes you have to have to make the decision if you're gonna deploy nuclear weapons. And wonder if she, Joe Biden definitely can't make that decision in time. But if she's under the influence, if Kamala is under the influence of a CNS depressant, she most definitely cannot make that decision in a timely manner. If you look when she speaks, you can see that she has a hard time thinking and concentrating clearly. And the press routinely dismisses it saying, she just doesn't speak well in public. Yeah, when you're under the influence of a CNS depressant, you don't speak well in public. Am I accusing her of using a CNS depressant? Yes, yes I am. In fact, I think she should submit to a urine and a blood test when she shows these signs and symptoms. And what's even more worrisome, people are allowing her to go on stage knowing she has these issues and then embarrass our country by going forward. Now, what happens if she becomes president of the United States? Again, a Christian warrior training, we talk about how to keep your church safe, and we often talk about critical incidents that occurred. And then I tell you how we're going to keep our country or how we're going to keep our church safe and make some whatever I just reviewed not happen at your church. And if you want free training for your church safety team, everything I do here is free. Head over to ChristianWarriorTraining.com, sign up for my newsletter, and you will get all sorts of tips and tricks to keep yourself safe, your team safe, and your church safe. It's all free, a gift to you from me as a fellow follower of Christ. All right, but why am I bringing this up on my channel? Because if she is elected, look at look at the administration so far. We have an unknown number. I gotta be careful what I say on YouTube. People have crossed the border that can harm other people that have done so in other countries. And they're unaccounted for here. And that open border has put a major threat to our churches. That main group in the Middle East that doesn't like us, that we were at war with for so long, has come out and said that they want their followers to attack churches and synagogues in the United States. It was because of our administration that that happened. And we need to stand up and take a stand. I know that I'm probably going to lose followers for doing this video. But if you don't go out and vote and you aren't well informed, our churches are going to be more at risk and at risk more of an attack. I started Christian Warrior Training to provide free training to you so that you can secure your church. I am now training you in drug recognition, okay? I'm teaching you that these are signs and symptoms of drug impairment. And we should all be worried and we should be all scared because she continues to go out in public and continue to be intoxicated. It is not a word salad. It's just not that she can't speak in public. She is intoxicated 100%. All right, my friends. If you, if you love Jesus and you want to keep your church safe, hit subscribe, like, leave a comment. There are tons of people that come to this channel and come watch videos after at one after the other, but don't subscribe. Subscribing is super important for the YouTube algorithm. It means that my word gets out there more and I would appreciate it. I will get a ton of down votes for this video because the Democrats are going to come out in mass. Hit that like button, smash it, leave a good comment. 
and then share it with all of your Christian friends to inform them and let them know, but also to come and hit the like button to beat out all of the people that are going to vote for a drunk or an intoxicated person next year and hitting that down vote. I've got to counteract those. And so I would really appreciate all of your help. And if you like keeping your church safe, subscribe and follow us, get our free newsletter. Remember, there are two things that you can do to protect your church and your country. Number one is to unceasingly pray. Pray for the safety of our country. Say, pray for the safety of our churches. Pray for the safety of your family. I'll take a prayer if you want to. I would appreciate it. And then the second most important thing you can do is remember your ABCs. Always be caring.